a DMM is probably one of the first electronic test tools that you ever got, and for some of you, it's the only one you have. Digital multimeters measure multiple things, it's in their name, but they can measure more than just voltage, current, and resistance. My name is James, and this is Workbench Wednesdays. In this video, we look at some DMM measurement tricks that go beyond the basics. Let's go measure. In previous episodes, we covered basic DMM usage, looked at continuity mode in depth, and talked about the difference between two wire and four wire measurements. Even though I am not going to cover much on the basics in this video, I think anyone can still pick up some ideas about how DMMs work and a few ways to use them. By the way, I put these great tips together with the help of the Element 14 community. Check below for a link to that discussion. For the first tip, let's cover what to check when current measurements are not working. As I have said in the past, whenever you are done with a current measurement, immediately move the lead back to the voltage terminal. Even if you think you're going to make another measurement, move it anyway. Otherwise, you will eventually blow the fuse. When a DMM measures current, it measures the voltage across a very small shunt resistor. The fuse protects that resistor from overcurrent conditions. Even though there are separate terminals for voltage and current, they share a common point. If they are connected together, there should be a closed path. So to test the fuse, put the meter into resistance mode and then stick the voltage probe into the current or amperage terminal. On this meter, the 10 amp socket measures almost zero ohms and the 10 milliamp socket measures high resistance because it is a slow blow fuse. For reference, if I remove the back cover and very gently but carefully remove the fuses and then repeat the same measurement, now both terminals are in open. By the way, if your probe tip has a high voltage protective cover, you may need to remove it before inserting it into the terminal. This simple tip saves time because you do not have to disassemble the DMM or even remove the fuse just to make sure it is working. And let's be real, everyone blows the fuse on their DMM at some point. Okay, next up, let's do some things with diode mode. BJTs can be thought of as two diodes, at least from a measurement perspective. Using that idea, we can measure if a transistor is good. This 3904 NPN goes emitter base collector. Using diode mode, put the positive lead on the base pin, then touch the common probe to the emitter and then the collector. For both, you should get about one diode drop, which in this case is 0.7 volts. Last, check the resistance between the emitter and collector to make sure that they are not shorted. For P and P transistors, just switch the leads. For example, connect the common to the base and the positive to the emitter and collector pins. Okay, so we need to see what happens when a transistor goes bad. So for fun, I applied 30 volts and 900 milliamps from a BC337's emitter to its collector. Afterward, when I measured the junctions from the base, they seem to look fine. However, the resistance of all of the pin pairs is much lower than before. And in diode mode, the DMM shows a forward voltage across the emitter and collector. It's dead, James. Next, let's measure an in-channel MOSFET. Remember that a MOSFET's gate is a tiny capacitor. By charging it up with a small amount of current, we can make the drain's channel conductive enough for measurement. The pinout of this IRFZ44 is gate drain source. Start by shorting all three terminals together for a couple of seconds. Then measure the resistance from drain to source to verify that it is high impedance. Now put the meter into diode mode. Touch the positive probe to the gate and the common probe to the source for a few seconds. Change the mode back to resistance and put the probes on the drain and source pins. And now we see about one ohm of resistance. The channel is conducting. Isn't that MOSFET measurement cool? Now, of course, a DMM alone cannot measure the dynamic characteristics of a BJT or FET but this is a good first order measurement to see if the transistor is dead. Next, we have a colorful tip from the community. We already used diode mode to see the forward voltage of junctions. And when it comes to LEDs, longtime viewers of mine know exactly what I'm about to say. Do not rely on the leg length to tell which is the anode and cathode. That is a convention and not a standard. Besides, somebody in your workspace might have clipped the leads. However, the tip I wanted to point out came from the community. 
use your DMM to determine an LED's color. When biased correctly, LEDs light up and the DMM shows their forward voltage. Some DMMs max out at one volt in diode mode, but they still can light up even a blue LED. Now, obviously this trick is more useful for LEDs with a clear lens. And it also works great to verify orientation and color of surface mount LEDs when you're reworking or hand soldering them. Even though they are marked, it is way easier to see which terminal is the cathode by seeing which way the DMM lights them up. Relate it to special diodes, if you want to verify the breakdown voltage of a Zener, a DMM by itself usually isn't enough. You'll need some kind of power supply and a 1K resistor. Reverse bias the diode and connect the DMM across its leads. On the power supply, increase the voltage until the DMM shows that the voltage has stabilized. That is the Zener voltage. You could skip the resistor, current limit the supply to a few milliamps, and see what voltage the supply clamps to. But I can't tell you about a tip in a DMM episode that doesn't use a DMM, can I? Before closing, I have one more tip and it involves the actual tips. Get new ones, or actually just get some different ones. For example, mini grabbers with banana plugs work great for hands-off measurements. I especially like to use these as a ground connection so that I only need to use one probe to poke around a circuit. Sometimes I use banana to banana cables to connect directly to power supplies. Okay, I have one more tip because it was only very recent that I realized how to use the probe holder on the back of most DMMs. Well, it turns out they just snap into the ring cutout. Pretty easy, right? I point this out because here's what I used to do, and then I wondered why I always poked myself. Visit the Element 14 community to find links to the DMM and the parts I showed in this video. You can also join our DMM tips discussion over there. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to multiple measurements on my electronics workbench.